Ready? And welcome to the third annual YWCA of the City of New York Girls Symposium! Device addicted, Wi Fi hunting, anti scouting, junk food vacuuming, Wi Fi hunting, advertising target. It's the future. Now, I'm not talking about iPhone 17s, the Samsung hoverboard, anti gravitational car, neuro chip downloadable school Jetsons future. I'm talking about Fortune 500 companies owned by 17 year olds, 14 year old Harvard professors, 18 year olds who are neurosurgeons and 12-year-old Oscar nominees tomorrow, future. Some say it's wild, reckless, impossible. But it's the future. It's tomorrow. Today doesn't understand what tomorrow looks like because today only knows yesterday. Today looks at tomorrow on the train, on its way to work, scoffs at tomorrow's disregard for societal norms, tries to make money off of tomorrow's pop culture, tries to stay relevant, tries to tame tomorrow, making something tangible, something hackable, shippable, marketable, because today knows that time is money. And yesterday's time is up, today is trying to keep up, and tomorrow is the watch sitting on today's wrist so why is it that yesterday made the rules that today is enforcing to keep tomorrow in check? The system is all messed up. Don't you see it? Tomorrow is right here, standing in front of you today. Wild, reckless, impossible. Standing in all of its device addicted Wi-Fi hunting anti-establishment, jump food back and even more. Standing here. Asking today to forget tomorrow, forget yesterday, and remember to just look at its watch sometimes and remind itself what time it is. Marcy Tal Morales, and I'm the Senior Director of Girls Initiatives for the YWCA of the City of New York. It's been a long time. I'm sorry, I'm like emotional. <laughs> it is my pleasure to welcome all of you here today as we join together to support high school and middle school girls across New York City. In, event, in the event's first two years, we brought together 150 high school students to talk about gender equity. Well, this year, we're happy to expand the event to include 50 middle school students as well to take part in the conversation, so welcome. Continuing to bridge minds and build movements, because 
because only when we come together as a collective that we can achieve greatness. Good morning! Hey, y'all! Hey! What's up? What's up? Hey, y'all! Good morning! 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 Um, just know that you are in a safe, nurturing environment today where you can be free to explore new aspects of your identity in partnership with girls that you know and with girls that you don't know. This is our third annual Potential to Power Symposium. And we grappled a lot with the name for this event, um, but we wanted to really emphasize that your power actually begins now, not when you get someone's permission, not when your friends approve, not when your parents approve, not when you have a certain degree. Um, everything that you have to offer is available to you and to the universe today, which is incredibly amazing. So today we're gonna talk about how to bridge activism, STEM, community organizing, and leadership. Right? Because we know that everything is political, everything has meaning, everything including the music, the culture, the clothes, is open for analysis now. I was like, you know, when I was your age and a song came on the radio, we listened, maybe we danced. Um, but you guys, like, when Formation came out, everybody was like, you know, what is Beyonce really singing here? <laughs> Just a whole new level of engagement, which is incredibly um, exciting and promising. So with that, I want to thank Microsoft for hosting us today. We have the responsibility to pass the budget with the mayor. A budget that funds programs, a budget that funds our Department of Education, right? Which is an incredible responsibility, but those of us that really take that responsibility seriously need to be asking and engaging in those conversations with each and every one of you in this room to say, what can we do to make it easier for you to succeed? And so that what conversation is what we engaged in for the past year, uh, and now we have a blueprint, uh, a really thorough document that is gonna give us, as, as uh, the government of the city of New York, kind of a roadmap to Everyone. My name is Nicole Zipkovic. Thank you for introducing me, Percy and Ari. And thank you to everyone for coming today. It is so important that we have these conversations and that we're all activists on our own front. A little bit about what I do. I started a social media campaign called Girls of New York. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and we have our own website, gonimovement.org. So I definitely encourage all of you to become an active part of it by liking, sharing, following. Uh, what we do is we interview and photograph different girls, women, people who identify as such, and allies. So really this is a conversation to be had between everyone. I think it's important to remember that while we're all mostly women co coming and having this conversation today, that we really need to have everyone be an active part of this. So we aim to share the people's stories and hopefully inspire other people to speak up about their own personal initiatives and what they're going through. And what we found is that allowing people to have a voice is often a privilege that I know I take for granted, but also is a privilege that not everyone has. From an 11-year-old girl with Parkinson's talking about her disability and how she's felt, it has kind of hindered her ability to grow as an individual, overcoming that, to global leaders at the United Nations Every single person has a voice, and Girls of New York aims to share those stories. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Idri. Thanks um, for presenting me as well. Um, and I definitely agree that it's important for us to like promote um, girl or women le women leaderships in in our community. Um, so what I do is, um, with help of some friends, I started my school's first feminist club um, last summer. And I think it was important, we realized, I think it started because we kind of needed an outlet to like um, just voice what we've been experiencing as young women in high school, young women in our community. And we kind of needed that support group to 
like really just get together as young girls in our school. And I think it really grew as some, a place where we, we represented all the girls in our schools, a place where we advocated for just girl, education for young girls and just really a place that, that uh, something that needed to take part in our school just because I feel that in our current society, there's a lot of like marginalization and like setbacks for young girls that like really hinder us from, from just growing and really taking part in like things that are necessary. So um, definitely we, we meet once a week and we bring up um, things from like the news or things that like have been taking place in like social media and we welcome not only young girls but also men because I think it's important to make sure that we are very inclusive between both genders and people that I, like identify with like different sexualities because it's not young girls that have to be taking part of this, it's everyone. And once we, I think, realize that, I think we can definitely move forward and um, really start advocating for young girls. So yeah, that's what I did. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Kami, and of course I want to thank you all for saying yes. You could have been anywhere else this morning, but you chose to be here, so that says a lot. Um, so a little bit about what I do. When I was a freshman in high school, I'm a senior now, um, I started the My Shine Speaking Tour. So uh, the aim of that was for young girls um, to identify what makes them shine and kind of what is their light. And the My Shine name actually came from two of the most influential women in my life, my mother and my sister. So of course, like the first letter, mother and then sister, but it's ironic because my mom's name is Myra, my sister's name is Shalima, so that worked out pretty perfectly. And what I did was I spoke at about seven or eight events around New York City just sharing my spoken word poem called Where I'm From. And that was really me just taking what I'm really passionate about, which is spoken word poetry and, of course, um, empowering young women. And the goal of the poem was, of course, was to show where I'm from and the experiences that I've gone through, but to also really shine a light on how you can take those negative experiences and completely turn that into golden opportunity. And this is called being an alchemist. So at these events that I spoke at, um, I, of course, wanted to share my passion of spoken word poetry, but really becoming an alchemist this is what I decided to focus on. And that's something that I've continued throughout the years since my freshman year. And that's really what um, I feel like my mission and my goal in life is to accomplish, is to making sure that each girl in the First, I want to thank um, the YWCA of the City of New York for inviting me to deliver remarks this morning on behalf of young leaders working for change all over the city. Thank you to Dr. Danielle Mosley for her leadership and Darcy Tell Morales for organizing this conference. So I don't give like a big round of applause. So I was really excited when I found out this year's theme is bridging minds, building movements. Being able to call myself a youth activist comes with constantly asking the question of why am I doing something? When writing this speech, I thought to myself, what is it that I want to convey? Do I just want to tell the audience that social justice is important? Well, one, that's cliche, and two, it's obvious. But what's not obvious is the pathway to being able to bridge minds, build movements, and work towards a social justice campaign that empowers and most importantly creates change. Whenever I need inspiration, I look to the civil rights movements and how it wasn't just Martin Luther King or Malcolm X who were the leaders, but it took a unifying force, where there were thousands of leaders in each community who came together to fight for the same cause. Movements are about mobilizing people behind a shared purpose. If we all work together to generate ideas that create more involved, more meaningful cultural connections, it'll make people feel that their incentive is a better future. And who wouldn't want to be a part of that? I'm borrowing Malcolm X's words by saying that the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. As a person who fights for educational equity and social justice in our school systems, a movement, a change does not start from the top down, but from the bottom up. Brown versus Board of Red reached the Supreme Court because fearless activists, parents, 
and most importantly, students fought to take it there. This is the power of movements. They could start out with just a small group of people who believe passionately in something, and then they could end up challenging the culture around them. When I was asked, what empowers you to pursue activism? I immediately go back to this one moment where I had the opportunity to give a talk at this particular New York City high school on Friday morning. And coming back to my school that same day, I felt pretty shaken up. I witnessed students from all racial and economic backgrounds come together, and I remember wondering why was I so shocked? Why did it feel abnormal for different types of people to integrate in all places of school? After countless hours of research, I realized that the reason why this was so peculiar, peculiar was because New York City has the most segregated schools in the country. And in fact, a UCLA study found that the 19 of New York City's 32 community school districts are over 90% black and Hispanic. I soon knew the answer was to integrate schools, to create a healthy learning environment, have equitable resources and equal opportunities at success. It doesn't take rocket science to figure out when there is segregation in the education system, inequality occurs. I just want to pause here for a moment and acknowledge that this is the first step to bridging minds. You must identify that a problem does in fact exist. It is as simple as asking a question. And what motivated and empowered me was figuring out an answer. To do so is a stepping stone to be a successful unifier. To change a society, you must first change minds. Yes, that seems like a daunting task. But looking at the leaders of today and yesterday, we see a common trend. Whether it's Rosa Parks or Malala, that the root of change comes from passion and determination. Yes, these figures had to go through hell and back to improve the conditions around them. But one thing I want to reiterate is that they didn't do it alone. They organized and collaborated with so many like-minded activists. And the great part is that we currently live in New York City. In my opinion, the most innovative and alive city in the world. If you want to spark a movement, you're living in the right place. The day after I visited the New York City High School I mentioned earlier, I knew I wanted to do something. So I started talking about school segregation with my friends and family. I started talking about the Civil Rights Movement, Brown versus Board of Ed, talking about how there's a clear pipeline from segregated schools to the prison system. I used conversation and tried to educate as many people as I can to make the invisible visible, not knowing what I will accomplish necessarily. I created forums in my school to talk about the issue, and in the process gained friends and people who were willing to drop everything and join the fight against school segregation. At the time, of course, I was doubtful in my ability to convince my peers that this affects so many innocent students. It can affect someone sitting right next to you. But now, I'm convinced that if you want to change something, all that you initially need is the will to just say, I'm going for it. People around me started to talk about the importance of diversity, of integration, and soon enough, I had council men and women want to listen to what I have to say. I simply took time to spark a conversation, and now I'm finally working on something that I'm passionate about. I've been told many times that my voice doesn't matter, that I can't change the system, that it's too powerful up there, whatever that means. And I only started to believe in myself when I realized the power I actually had influencing others to use their voice, and they influence other people, and the cycle will continue. When I look in this room, I see powerful women activists. I see inspiration, and I see a drive. But ladies, we do have our hands full. As underrepresented women, what frustrates me personally is when society paints us with a single breaststroke and thinks it knows everything about us, then calls us oppressed, our communities thinking we can't just because of our gender. Even within the activist field, more and more people are focused on how we look rather than what we have to say. <coughs> Wearing a hijab doesn't mean that I have a barrier separating me from success. Yet in fact, these generalizations made by the mainstream has helped me reach out to other underrepresented groups. What seems like a disadvantage turns into an opportunity to reach out and collectively rise up. Yes, we're at a disadvantage. In a society that still has the debate of whether or not we deserve equal rights. But it'll only become a problem when we sit down and accept it. I call everyone to participate in habits that makes you act as a unifier and use your personal experience to be able to strengthen not only your voice, but the voices around you. 
Become the stepping stone that bridges minds by listening to those that experience injustice, by advocating, educating, and finally organizing to create a just and better society. The reason why movements today continue to play the recordings of King and Malcolm X is because their message is something that will never die. Again, I look to the civil rights movement and remind myself how the leaders of yesterday were able to unite people to come together and fight on the right side of history. Today, you will be the leaders of tomorrow. And however many days, months, years it takes for you to be content with your growing movement, I know that there will, many, that there will be many others that will continue your legacy. It's the power of human connection and a like-minded vision. Change starts with you, but I promise it'll not end with you. Thank you. And I am still a kid. I like going to the park and I'll play football with my friends, but then at the same time, my mom says I literally can't afford to get hurt. So, <laughs> So it's just finding the balance of being an entrepreneur and being a kid. And that could be difficult because sometimes I can't go to a friend's birthday party because I have a fashion show. Or vice versa, I can't go to a fashion show because I want to support someone who's always supported me. So just try to make sure everything is given my equal attention because everything deserves it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, So I attended the World um, Business Forum and Richard Branson, R Richard Branson was asked what was it in his life that made him an entrepreneur and of course there I am at Radio City Music Hall and it is filled with suits and in those suits are a bunch of like white dudes and they were like so excited to hear this answer because this was going to unfold their world and get them out of management and they were going to become successful like Richard Branson and Richard Branson looked at the, the interviewer and looked at the audience, he said, the secret to my success, I came from a loving home. So I wanna give a shout out to your parents. <laughs> all right, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, to have someone ask one more question, is that, all right. Oh, John, does anyone have a question? Oof. And since it's all about networking, that's why I'm getting you to say who you are and where you go to school. Hi, um, my name is Sasha Darcio. I'm from the High School for Law Public Service. My whole school is here. In this room. <laughs> so I hope I'll be becoming a fashion designer one day. So I, I actually have my own stuff starting out, but it's really difficult. So I wanted to know, how did you manage? Like, because starting a clothing line is really hard. You have to find a name, a look. So how did you do all of that? The key is to definitely make sure it's coming from the heart. That way, it doesn't seem as difficult as it actually is. But also finding a mentor, someone who knows the ropes and is doing it so they can help you. I have a mentor, he's a fashion designer, so sometimes we'll go on little trips to the fabric store and while I think I'm getting fabric, I'll learn so much from him about the marketing and the promoting everything that's like behind the scenes that no one really sees. So just make sure that the information you're getting, you're taking it all in because all of it can be put to use. Okay, so other than sparkly shoes, because um, we seem to got the memo today, uh, what, what, should, what should we be wearing this spring? <laughs> what are the trends? I never thought.